Hi, it's me, the guy who do computer science. So, I'm learning Java for a fifth thousand time, but it's cool because now I'm actually learning something unique, which is class. Class, class, holy shit, class is kind of confusing. So here's the issue. Here's a issue, no, here's a thing. Okay, although this is wrong, so I need to uh, redo this. Okay, so, uh, let me close this. This is class, as in like, you, this is a class that you meant to use on your main uh, driver or your main section. So, I created a student, so I remember, how to say ah. Uh, there is a thing called scanner. Remember scanner? Okay. So let's say you want the scanner, scanner. Uh, I'll enter. Sure. You can import scanner. Scanner input equals to new scanner. And then you put something in here like system in. Okay. So remember this? This is a class. Scanner is a class itself. And then you have new scanner. This is your constructor. And this is a specific constructor you want it to have. And basically, we the reason why we even import it is because there's a far, far, far away in the web or somewhere in that's handling Java, someone created a, a, a class called Scanner and have many different uh, collector if, uh, as in like, if they use con collector constructor where if you put a specific thing in here, you do specific other thing. So if you put system in, then that will try to read your message. You put uh, your, the user message. So this is a type of a uh, class. And now we are creating our own class called student. So if, for example, uh, now you can even say you can make a student. Student. So you can now say student is a new student. And it worked perfectly uh, according to how you make it. So I have it that the student, if there's no uh, parameter or there's like, yeah, there's no parameter, uh, then it is the default constructor. Okay. Um, I need a return. For now, I just put, um, for now, I put, just type it out for now. Uh, there's a specific thing I need to do in the tool string, and also, let's before this let me comment this out. Okay, does this thing need to be? I don't think this need to be here. I think I can just there you go. So, is there any other trouble? What's the other trouble? Oh, because this thing is here. Okay, so. If we just do like this and we run like this, you can see after you build it, it's gonna take a while. You can see it show nothing because it's just a variable. Student, we just have input and student as a variable. So let's say you want to print what the student is. Uh, let's say you want to print the student and how it looks like because we already created a new student, right? And here we say that oh, the new student. Um, have this property, right? So, but if we do it like this, do, 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 and because now we're using class from a different uh, side, um, it take longer to to load. So you can see a student at uh, a uh, a number, uh, a, a random jimbo. This is because this is stored in a computer language. That we human are not meant to understand okay so in order to prevent that or in order to make it so that we understand because anytime you put in into a print statement in here everything in here will automatically go to string so let's say you have uh, integer a equals to 2 and if you put this a in here it actually means that a is dot to uh, sorry it's actually to string is it a dot to string or to string dot a something like that 
they make it so that A is now being read out as a string. Or is it only work on... Look, I, there's something in there that makes sense, but my brain is not telling me it makes sense right now, but you have to trust me that it somehow makes sense. Basically, you need to have the two string function, which is right here, that what if someone call two string, uh, and you say, okay, if they do the two string, you have to actually tell them what to do. So you have to say, okay, student uh, name uh, is a string, uh, cost is a is a string and uh, what's it semester is a decimal yep then in here you say name cost and semester okay so now if we go back here if we go back here and run this Boom, it will now display the text and this is the default constructor where if you put nothing in that okay so now we actually want to have something in that and what if uh, first of all if you want to have something in there you probably have want to have many different settler or gatler uh, that may you want to overwrite the details so let's say you want to set string and get string so here you can say uh, so after you print you can see the change Okay, so you can say uh, student dot set name. Now you can set a name you want. So I say I want to be Zyra Dos. Uh, and now if we print out the name again, or print out the student class thing, Bob, you can see it change. There we go. So this is set, and the, the how it works is that if you use set name, you just change the private variable. Also, all oh, these are pirate private so you cannot access them in your other java for a uh, code and but you can handle it in here and everything in here is public so that you can access that's how you are uh, able to have this access uh, uh, function so and because you this is public and some other program call it then in here you have the internal system uh, internal Privates that change the variable uh, variable, and then it, everything is all stored under the specific variable you make here, which is student. Because you can have you can have new student, so you can have new student student uh, student two equals to a new student. Okay, and this will store its own individual. Uh, create a new class and install their own set of variable by themselves so this is how that works so we also can say get name which return the name so if we say um, so instead of like student let's say you want to say uh, system print out uh, student dot get name you can see my name will print out twice that will one up here one down here cool so that is a uh, settle getter obviously that's only one set you have to uh at least the exercise tell you to ask me to do for every other variable so we have so to make it you put public void so that uh so that it it doesn't really matter you can make it so that because the next one is the integer semester uh, set semester semester okay you can do it like this also but it's kind of dumb uh, uh, sorry integer s where semester is equal to s uh, return uh, return semester is it like this or some return s you can do it like this but what's the point where well, you can just put it as a void It's basically, it's basically just the same thing. But this one, if you want to return a specific kind of value, let's say you want to get the name, so you actually want to have uh, put it as integer uh, get semester integer of s. Then you want to say return uh, 
some messed up. Cool. Um, same thing with public uh, string cost. Uh, sorry, uh, set cost. No, no, not string. Void set cost. Uh, we have your string. Let's say C. We here have uh, cost equals to C. And lastly, we have public string get cost string C. Actually, there's no string C. What am I doing? You just get cost. You just use the function to get cost. You don't. You don't do this. There we go. And you have return uh, cost. Okay. So that is all the thing done. Perfect. Uh, and if I, I, I will test later on. But another thing you can do in here, the constructor, is that let's say instead of like um, create uh, the default constructor, then uh, manually set the name cost semester individually you can just directly set it the moment you construct you know that's why it's the name uh, the moment you create the the cost uh, the, the student so let's say uh, because we have names so you want to say string uh, n um, integer uh, semester is s then you have another string of course so you have to input this three uh, variable in and the moment you put it in you just have to change it so name is equals to n um, semester is equal to s and course is equal to c and this is now your new student okay so let's say student 2 instead of a uh, Having another same default, you can say student two is. Uh, another way you can do it is that instead of like having a student, student, new student, all again, it says student, it says student one, um, student two, like this. Then it says student two, or student one is equal to a new student. This one can be a default student. Then you have student two is equal to new student but now you can put in what you want your student to have so for example um, in the exercise they want me to put in Alex uh, in SEM5 sorry Alex in SEM5 of course uh, BCS uh, BCS okay so if we print out student 1 and we print out student two and this one student one set his name it says student one you can see the get name also and you run if we run this here you can see uh surname it will be the third, 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 third semester one student two will be lx cost bcs uh semester five um yeah i'll change the format here later on then student name uh this after i use the student where is it uh set name so i change the name uh the cost is still the same and then this i print out the name by itself so that's that uh what other thing i need to do hold on um okay so here is how you're meant to here I need to do specific thing okay first of all the uh, how you need to say so uh, check if both students are eligible to get credit print as per sample below so oops student student uh, with name X studies uh, cost S in semester this amount okay so this all the thing then I put I put a 
next on is a um, da, 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 here and um, is eligible that's not how it's right eligible eligible to get credit exemption okay but hold on also I need here to be up can this like this work you can okay good I want to this push in so I can see better uh, but this one I want to make it into one statement oh shit a uh, 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 one option so let me copy all this where's my mouse let me use my mouse copy all this and say if um, how's it students who are in semester 4 to 6 are eligible if uh, semester sorry I need to put it in here if semester is um, more than or more equal to 4 and semester is sorry semester is less than or equal to 6 okay you may print this um, else sorry uh, you may return this else um, return is not eligible for a credit assumption okay so this will make it so that only a student with semester 4 to 6 will get it so with this I think I'm done and I can just do the do what I need to do so let me reset all this we don't even need this uh, we don't even need the input scanner okay so they want me to do uh, create two student okay so create a two student object as below so I can say uh, student the class uh, with a variable student one student two okay uh, and here you say student one uh, student one is equals to new student with the name uh, Alex uh, in semester 5 or uh, with a course of BCS okay and student 2 will be the new student with the name of Mindy uh, in semester 2 of course BIT okay so then update the name of student one to Johnson so you can say student one dot set name just change Johnson and uh, check if both students are eligible and then we can say print Oh, I hit that holding down shift show that uh, print student 1 and print student 2 so Alex or Johnson will have credit exemption while the Mindy shouldn't have and now we have a problem oh god oh god illegal format conver uh, conversion exception I mean illegal format conversion exception where is it it is main java of 14 and student of 44 it's something about here can i not do like this why can't i do like this hold on if I remove like the whole else if else statement 
，呃，这个 copy it。Okay, this should work normally, right? Oh no, I done something fucked up. Is it this? Is it, I think it's something to do with this. No, I should probably check the uh check any uh, check out all the error. Uh, it's now use. That's fine. It's now use. Now use. Now use. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think this need to be in the back. So. Um. There we go. Is eligible to get a credit exemption. Then here is name. Uh, some master course. Sorry, in course then semester. Course then semester. Okay, this should work then. Okay, good. Um, though it's gonna. I think I need a line break here where is. Uh, I do a line break here so it's more readable. But I think my if statement is correct, uh is is doable, right? If a uh, semester is more than or equal to four and there's not n and semester is less than or equal to six, then you want to open the bracket. Down here you want to close the bracket, and here I say else. Uh, open bracket. Copy the whole statement and say is not eligible. Hope for the best. Ah, it works. Okay, good. So this works how it's intended. <laughs> Um, let me check whether I need to do anything else. Oh, there's another method I need. Okay, so that's not how you're meant to do. You need to do another thing. Oh, shit. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I can do... They want me to create another function. Um, it's called check eligibility. Okay. And check is literally just this. I think it's just this. Instead of saying no, I think instead of saying return, I think it's better to just say print. Uh, like print f this whole format. Same goes here. So here, if we say, so instead of doing this, we say, uh, student one dot check eligibility, and let's say remove this tool. We run this. Student with name is uh, eligible to get credit exemption. Why is there slight space here? Uh, but I also need to have a line break at the end here. Okay, so that if we do student two dot check eligibility, okay, 
I thought you said line break here. I did not what? Oh, 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 I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot, okay. No. There we go. Okay, then if we uh, want to be more more readable, we can put a, a, a empty section here. And voila, cool. So this is a uh, good. Let me rename this to exercise one. Uh, reflector rename to exercise one. Cool. So there is another exercise here, uh, which is generally the same thing. Instead, now we're using more math question. Um, so like they have an equation of taxes and do the prices. Um, I think I just do that by myself because a my battery is running low, so I'm not sure how long I can be recording. B. Um, I mean, I can do. I guess I can do the. I can do. A starting field and if I run into any trouble I probably just stop it there um, this is quite a short one yeah you know fine new class uh, let's call this exercise 2 okay so this should be the main driver so let me let me copy this Uh, perfect okay so then we also need a new new class uh what is it what they want me to call it uh retail outlet tv they want called tv class okay so this is a public TV class. Um, if you think about it, since they're all always a class, exercise one, you can technically call um, uh, exercise one, and then you can do the thing inside exercise one. Um, it's it's kind of interesting to think of that, but um, wait, this one tell me the draw the UML class diagram for the TV class what the fuck is the UML UML uh, uh, class diagram oh my lord okay I, I clear, clear I, I obvi obviously I can't draw this in here oh okay here I, I know what to draw okay um, <laughs> I guess I can technically draw it but I need my paint let me open up paint, I guess. So, um, switch this to paint. Oh, you guys already can see in the background. If I draw like this, you can see, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just minimize this. Okay. So, so this one is basically a UML diagram is like this let me actually, I actually need to submit this so I actually need to draw this quite nicely so you need a box okay so let's not make this as, as so big so here's a box okay then here we're gonna have a, a straight line here okay we need a text Yeah, yeah, let's just, just enter. Uh, 20, I guess. Okay, 
good. Bow centered. Center to here. Can make this even bigger. Okay. This is called TV, obviously. Um then in here the object of the class TV will consist of stock uh number as string. Stock number as string, okay. Kind of a weird one uh, because it's called number by you okay, but it's called string. So I got left. So I can make it a bit smaller, so you can differentiate a bit. Uh, okay, so uh, here you have to because we are doing it in the private. Let me we're doing it in the private, so you actually just want to uh, um, uh, this is just a variable for the class, so you actually want to set it as private. And since this is a stock, so I can say stock number. Um, as string, um, the the make of the TV, the make of the TV as string. What the fuck is the? I'm I'm reading this. I have no idea. What the fuck am I reading? The make of the TV. I guess. Just make? I have no idea what it means by a make of the TV. Uh, oh, this is interesting. This is the, the type. I guess I can just say stock. This is not stock number. Stock type. And you should open up this. To extend this a bit. Okay, type we can say is actually a character because they only need either W or R, which is widescreen or regular. I'm not sure whether I need to specify that, but I just put car. Uh, and then lastly, we have price, which is a, a double, which is a double float. Cool. Then um, we need to do another thing here is that we need to create a constructor. So okay, I may need a bigger box. It's fine. Uh, we have shape. So this is your property, the attribute. That's the attribute for your character. Next, we have the thing, the constructor, the set, the thing about. This one I can make it even smaller, like 18. Okay, it's good enough. Okay, so you have your constructor. Con, con. I'm just following the format that it show us, constructor which is TV okay then we have constructor with TV um, S string uh, M M string okay this is gonna be a bit hard to work with eh uh m string uh, m mm. okay and, and let's does this change all of it no right okay this will be too small no 15 let's say size 15 you can read it constructor TV, TV, uh, S, I still think it's too, it's not enough space, M, string, yeah, T, I'm gonna type everything first, uh, cha, P, double, then here I can highlight, 
into a smaller font. Okay, kind of works. Okay, then now we have your, let me put up 14 I guess. Your uh, settler and gathler, so you can say it's your standard. Uh, oops, it's your standard plus uh, get get stock, which is your brand. I mean, which is a string. Uh, I'm not sure I can fit all this in in, in here. Oh, okay, this is gonna be annoying. Uh. Plus uh, set stock, which is also a string. Who would have thought? Uh, sorry, not not strong a string. Um, also, when you set, you also need to indicate. Okay, it's a s string. Actually, no, you don't need to. Okay, the output. The output is the thing, you don't need to showcase it. Okay, good. So then we have plus uh, get make, uh, which is a this, which output a string. Then you have set make, uh, which require a string. Then you have plus uh, the get type which is a corrector and then you have plus set type which is a uh, corrector and then okay, how I'm going to do this I'm gonna first no okay I'm gonna no 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 I set it here then I use the tools of an eraser then I erase this thing it didn't take forever oh I right click shit you know what why not just do this delete then I can I just gonna continue writing so text 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 to text this is so scuff plus let me just make it so that this is actually where to put it. Okay, plus, uh, sorry, get um uh, price, which is a double, then set price plus set price, which is p the double. Okay, is there anything else I need to do with this? Um, the first three of these will be only set at the time an object created. The price will also set at the time of the creation, but may also need change. At the time you necessarily available data. A method should also be provided which accept the rate of the text as input and return the amount of text to be paid. So I actually need to write uh, a public function of public function uh, call call what the fuck you want to call it um, text text <laughs> I'm just gonna say text um, with <sighs> Accept a double, so accept double, and then it's gonna output return the amount of text to be paid. And it's gonna output a double, okay. And next, finally, we have plus two string. to 
string uh, which is gonna output a string I think that's it right so let me set this then I can use the shape here No, 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 This is gonna be very horrible, but it's gonna work just fine. They won't notice. It's kind of crooked at the end, right? <laughs> They're gonna be looking at this. It's like, wait a second. It's kind of slanted, ain't it? <laughs> uh, I, okay, I think that's all I can. Uh, that's how the UML look like. Yep. Okay, so uh, this is your TV. Let me save. I need to actually save this, but this is your TV, your UML. So let's get back to coding. Uh, save as PNG, sure. And then I upload this on my desktop for now. Save. Make sure it's actually in my desktop. Yes, it is. Close this. That's actually useful, so now, now I can use that as a reference to make my class. Uh, where's my... Oh, here it is. So, we go back here to exercise. So, this exercise too. So, the class TV. So, like, uh, like earlier, you need all those things. Um, and my battery is going to run out. Okay, so, I mean, I already show you how, how it looks like. You just use that diagram, do exactly how I do on student, and that's it. <laughs> you, uh, the only difference is that on the function, where is the function? Check eligibility. You, you you replace this with like text, and then you input a formula here, which is uh, text equals to price time rate of text over 100. And yeah, that's mostly it. Um, for this week what I learned so that's cool